My name is Maureen Spargo, and I'm a Senior Research and Innovation Programme Manager for the Medicines Optimization and Innovation Centre. This is a regional centre in Northern Ireland, which is dedicated to improving health outcomes by initiating, developing and sharing best practice with regards to medicines use. And my name is Nicola Goodfellow. I'm also a research program manager at the Medicines Optimization and Innovation Centre in Northern Ireland. And as program managers, we each manage a portfolio of research, service development and audit projects to support the work of MOIC. Through our work, we collaborate with partners across Europe and throughout the world to share, learn, engage with best practices and bring new innovations back to Northern Ireland. So SHAPE stands for Smart and Healthy Aging Through People Engaging with Supportive Systems. And it's an innovation action of the EU Horizon 2020 funding programme. So SHAPES is exploring how technology can enable the older population to live healthier lives for longer at home. So the aim is to create a central technology platform from which many partner organisations across Europe can contribute or deploy a range of practical and reliable digital solutions for supporting people's health and care needs. From the perspectives of caring for older people with multiple health conditions, having access to digital products that have been developed specifically to improve medicines use and safety from within people's own homes is hugely beneficial and can help shape how multimorbidity can be managed in an increasingly digital society. So the pilot campaign will establish the feasibility of implementing this type of platform in different healthcare settings across Europe. It will provide insights as to how the platform could fit into different aspects of service users' lives. And within this project, there are seven pilot themes investigating the various potential uses for the platform. They include smart living environment for healthy aging at home, improving in-home and community-based care, medicines control and optimization, psychosocial and cognitive stimulation, promoting well-being, caring for older individuals with neurodegenerative diseases, um, physical rehabilitation at home, and finally, cross-border health data exchange. So within each pilot theme, selected digital solutions will be adapted, integrated and deployed and evaluated in different real life circumstances. Um, a use case is a specific situation in which the product or service could potentially be used within shapes. And we have a number of different use cases that are being piloted to investigate the different ways in which the shapes platform could benefit these users. So the MOIC is leading medicines control and optimization pilot theme. So this pilot is focused on identifying, managing and improving deficiencies in adherence to treatment in older individuals who are living with reduced functions or capabilities due to chronic age related illnesses and they're living in their own homes. We're also, provide, we're also piloting a specific use case within the pilot theme in which the SHAPES platform and selected digital solutions will be deployed to a target population composed of people aged 65 years and older and who are living at home with heart failure and diabetes. So the selected digital solutions will be used to monitor participants' health conditions remotely so this largely takes the form of the participant measuring their own clinical parameters, for instance, their heart rate, their blood pressure or their blood glucose using a Bluetooth enabled device that synchronizes with a patient held app. So that data is then shared securely with a healthcare practitioner. So any changes in a participant's health status can then be identified early and managed appropriately. The system also permits for sophisticated data and analytics to 
or, or artificial intelligence to enhance patient care and offers healthcare practitioners the tools to provide a really highly personalized service to patients such as offering recommendations and reminders to improve adherence and optimize medicines use. Yes, so we are working with a technical partner to develop a risk prediction tool, which will help us identify participants who may be at a higher risk of an acute heart failure decompensation episode. And by identifying these higher risk individuals, we may be able to intervene to optimize medication use and hopefully prevent worsening symptoms from occurring. So a user testing phase of the platform and the associated digital solutions has just started and will run until the end of August. And we then aim to begin recruitment to the pilot in September 2021. So we aim to recruit 30 people for approximately four months to our pilot in Northern Ireland. And potentially eligible participants will be identified through hospital clinics and community partner organisations. We're also working closely with colleagues in Spain, the Czech Republic, Cyprus and Germany to run similar pilots within their healthcare systems. That will form part of the eligibility criteria in that um, participants will need to have access and to be able to use an Android tablet or smartphone device and also have um, sort of self-reported stable Wi-Fi um, connectivity. So we have a wide range of evaluation criteria, and this includes questionnaires that explore patient and clinician reported outcomes, uh, we have interviews and we are analysing actual usage data of the apps and the digital solutions. The outcomes will then be measured against key performance indicators, which have been developed specifically for the pilot. Selected evaluation frameworks are also being applied. For example, the momentum framework, which identifies critical success factors needed to take telemedicine from the pilot phase um, to large scale deployment. And we're also applying the mass evaluation framework, which can be used to assess the effectiveness and contribution of telemedicine applications to the quality of care. Yes, so part of the key performance indicators is measuring the participants' health outcomes. Um, at the start of the pilot and then um, at the end of the pilot as well. The length of the pilot and the, you know, the length of time that we are following them up means that we can, and a number of participants, means that we're not looking for clinical significance in any of the changes in the health outcomes. But what we're looking for is an indication that there is some sort of benefit. So things that we're looking at include things like hospitalizations and um sort of use uh, adherence to medication as well. So there's various different outcomes that we're looking at that are assessed and analyzed through these key performance indicators just to show us what impact the, um, the SHAPES platform and the solutions are having. So meeting the key performance indicators of the pilot, such as improving adherence or reducing hospitalizations, will indicate that we're heading in the right direction with regards to SHAPES, the SHAPES platform being capable of having a positive impact on people's lives. Um, there will be much more work to be done before the SHAPES platform can be deployed at a larger scale, but by conducting the pilots and collecting the necessary information for the evaluation frameworks, 
we will be better informed as to how shapes can benefit this population. And um, both, I think, in different ways. So the COVID-19 pandemic has um, accelerated interest and adoption, I would say, of technology and health enabled technology devices. Um, however, when you're trying to conduct research in a pandemic and COVID isn't your sole um, uh, purpose or objective to find how COVID is uh, affected or the patients are affected by COVID, it is a bit trickier because we are looking at participants who are over 65 they would fall, fall into that more vulnerable group. And it's tricky to try and think of, of problem solving to try and um, include these vulnerable, more vulnerable members of society into the research study, but without actually physically contacting them and doing a lot more remote data collection and remote um, facilitating of the research. What we're also doing as part of the pilot and within, within our specific use case is there's a digital solution offered by one of our technical partners that helps monitor symptoms in patients who either are COVID positive or suspected of being COVID positive. Um, it's a way of patients documenting how they feel every day and then there being some sort of safety net for any worsening of symptoms that perhaps would require you know further investigation so there's that sort of security and um monitoring remote monitoring that is being offered through the through the solutions um we're not sure how the effect of the vaccination program will have on you know, this particular aspect of of our use case and our pilot um but things are changing so quickly, um, which is great. Um, so we, we, we just don't really know what's around the corner 